Welcome to today's tutorial as I'll be showing you guys how to make the perfect snow boy. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name's Dahlia and today we are doing a little bit of a different style of video. Um, no, I'm not doing a tutorial on how to show you guys how to make the perfect snow boy, but I have gotten requests um, recently to show you guys how to place the pathing I'm using on my city island. So that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, I'm not very good at tutorials, but y'all seem to trust me. And I don't want that trust to go to waste. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to be decorating this area. Basically just connecting a couple of spaces. It's more like a transitional space than anything else. And essentially the first part of the video is going to be the tutorial. And then the second half will be like my more standard speed build. So I hope that you guys like today's video. If you do, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more videos from me. I'm trying to post more frequently as you guys would probably have noticed on my channel the last couple of days, but um, this won't stay the same way, but February I do have a lot of content pre-recorded, so a lot of great content is coming very, very soon. So. Anyway, uh, we're gonna get started. We have to open the Island Designer app and this part is sped up a little bit. Um, compared to my um, actual speed build portion, that's sped up a lot more. So this is the road pathing path we're gonna be using on today's video that I've been using across my island. It is created by Colin Crossing. I have talked about it before on previous videos, but I'm kind of just gonna go around and show you guys how to place the road down. It is a very large path. It does require quite a few tiles. I think it's like a 30 tile road and I don't even have the entire road path downloaded. Um, but yeah, these are the path tiles. I'm going to show you guys how I placed them and I made sure for this video to not cut anything so you can really see the entire placement of the path. So I got rid of a little bit of the pathing that I had done on my previous video so that we can connect these roads and we're going to be starting with my sidewalk by using this gray road path. This is the like side, side like the sidewalk tile I've been using on my island and essentially we're going to use this kind of like a a way of sectioning off the area and really just creating the layout of the road. Now initially I was actually going to make a parking lot on the bottom right hand corner of my map, but I decided instead it was kind of too small of a space and I wanted to be a little more creative with it. So instead we're doing another diagonal road just so I can show you guys also how to create a diagonal road too if you are curious about how to make them. So essentially I place the diagonal corner bits for the road path and then make sure that the road tile lines up accordingly. And right now I'm placing the other section of the diagonal path. I'm gonna be honest right now, later I do move it over one tile um, because as I was placing it down, I realized it was a little too small, too narrow of a, of a road. Um, one thing about diagonal roads is that you can make them whatever distance you want. It could be a one tile space. It could be a five tile space. Like there's no, there's no rule for how you have to place them. So here I am just connecting the road all the way down. I wanted to make sure once again that the diagonal road lined up perfectly with my sidewalk. And what I'm doing here is with the top of the road at the top of this build towards the bottom. I still have a diagonal road placed at the top of this build and it's something I decided to keep. So even though I cut into the diagonal road um, to create this vertical road, I was still able to maintain the shape of it as you can kind of see there. Um, what 
this creates is just you have to be very mindful of the the length of the additional roads that you create to make sure that it flows seamlessly if you want it to be more realistic um, so I'm now going to be placing the road tiles in the middle of the road and this is the like vertical and horizontal lines you see like the white chalk lines um, on this island I'm having one um, space in between each chalk line I have had um, roads where I've had two spaces but for this particular island I decided to do one space just because I liked how it looked on this particular pathing and this is a four tile wide road so you do have one custom design code for each side of the, the the chalk line so it is quite it's not tricky or difficult to put down but it's definitely something that takes a little bit of learning um, and practice to place down like I still struggle with placing it down myself and making sure that the road looks correct once I'm finished placing the pathing down like I do I still do struggle so I'm still shocked that you guys wanted to see a tutorial style like video for me um, hopefully this is making sense but as you guys can see by watching the video it's quite self-explanatory and it's really quite easy to follow once you know how to do it now these little road bits are the roads the little sideway um, snow parts that match up to the diagonal pathing and this is something you want to place down in the corner of the diagonal pathing just to complete the snow line this is a more of a unique um, road path than ones I've used in the past because it does require that additional um, tile placement to complete the road not all roads have this detailing on the edges of the road, so it's not always a requirement, but for this particular one, it is required. And as you guys can see, like I mentioned earlier, I did have to adjust my road a little bit to make it a little wider. And once you see it completed, you'll notice that it's a lot more natural and it looks a lot more like it flows a little better with the space. Now, originally I just placed this like corner bit of the sidewalk just because I wasn't quite sure at that moment what I was going to be doing with the bottom right hand corner, but I actually end up making a fake building towards the latter part of the video when we start working on the speed build portion. We're almost towards the end of the tutorial style. Last place I just need to show you guys is how to place down um, the sidewalk or the the crossway walk um, tiles now there is particular sideway tiles that do go with the side um, the crosswalk tiles and the end pieces once again do have that snowing that snow like detailing so it matches the sidewalk um, once again very easy to follow very easy to place down but it's something once again that just takes a little bit of practice to fully be able to do it a little more effortlessly. I still struggle once again. Um, it is a very um, unique way of building because it requires a lot of like making sure everything is symmetrical and everything lines up and is very uniform, um, which is not something I'm very used to when it comes to a lot of my builds. I traditionally like making a lot more natural builds, but with my last two islands, this one and my other city island, I've had to learn to be a lot more structured and mindful of placement of pathing um, so now we're we're basically finished with the tutorial at this moment I'm just placing this tile um, around this area um, just because I wasn't sure how I was gonna be building the area up I do make some cliffs just to enhance the height of the fake building I'll be creating in a few moments but I'm just using this sideway tile again just to um, fill in the space and create a little little flooring and one little part of this pathing path I want to showcase is um, the sideway bumps and the sewer grate that is also from Colin Crossing this comes with this pathing path if you choose to download it and it's a nice little addition to the path adds a little bit more realism to the city build 
and on top of that I'm also placing a couple of more miscellaneous pathing on the floor. Um, I've been using additional sewers. Um, I've also been using this newspaper design just because I do have a trash core island. So I always feel like this newspaper and this cardboard box design I've been using like looks like wet um, newspaper and wet cardboard boxes that have kind of like flattened themselves onto the concrete. So I'm just placing that kind of randomly. It kind of gives me another added layer of dimension because I use a lot of dropped items on this island like the scattered papers um, and a couple of more like trashy items just to make the areas look and appear a lot more messy and I feel like integrating these squared custom designs especially intermixed with the plain gray tile of this sidewalk really just adds an extra level of messiness and yeah, so we're essentially, we're finished at this point for the actual tutorial portion of the video. I hope it made sense. I hope you guys were able to follow along. If you guys want something more in depth where I really, I don't know, showcase how each path works with one another, I can do that. Um, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. But I felt like showcasing me actually placing it down step by step was the best way to kind of showcase how to place the pathing down. Um, so moving on to the actual build, I quickly ran around and planted some trees. Typically I do this at the beginning of videos after I've already placed all the pathing down just because it gives me a general idea of where all of the trees are going to be and then I can work with items and other like forms of decorating now that the trees are out of the way. Um, it really just depends on like the type of build I'm making because some builds require me building up cliffs first and some require me to place pathing down. Um, so now I'm placing some cliffs and I'm just going to do a 3x3 three three, um, cliff to act like a kind of like second story roof. And I'm going to make a little balcony kind of design. And I will actually be making two buildings kind of joined together as one. Um, just because I didn't want to make this building too big. I didn't want to have to do two stories with like additional cliffs on top of this one. So instead you'll see me in a couple of minutes make a second building. Um, and using a lot of the items in the game to emphasize height. And I never thought of doing a corner like a corner fake building like this, but I like how much height it gives the, the side of the street when you see the final walkthrough. Um, but yeah, and then for my little um, balcony, I wanted to use a vintage TV and like a table, um, keeping it very simple, but I wanted to use a vintage TV for this island for a while, um, or like some TV. I felt like the vintage chibi just like look kind of cool, kind of kind of run down. Um, so yeah, that's what I placed there. And then I don't think I included that in the clip in there, but I also threw down a um, bottle crate with a snack on top. Now I'm placing the retro transportation stops around the entire perimeter of um, the the cliff and I mentioned previously in other videos that I've been mainly using this gray version of the, the, the retro transportation stop but I wanted to incorporate the yellow one and the blue because those are the two like accent colors I'm using on my island to kind of go with the more grayscale color scheme on my island. So I use the yellow ones for the corners of my buildings in this build and I'll definitely be doing that in future builds. Um, be using them as like the front versions of the, the buildings as well. Um, but for this video they're just kind of like the like little side shingles of the buildings. Now here I am making that second building like I just like I mentioned and this one I just placed the retro transportation stops at the front 
and back just to kind of look like a roof and once again having to manipulate the cliffs so I can move the items the way I wanted to. Um, you will see me call rescue services at one point in this video because I couldn't get a like I couldn't move after I'd place items down which I've come to realize when it comes to building like more cluttered core, city core, trash core um, islands Sometimes you get stuck on a cliff and you have to call rescue services. It's just the way that it is. Um, and then here I'm mimicking exactly what I did for the other building and just placing the retro transportation stops. Um, for this second building, I also throw down some of the construction scaffolding, once again to add height. And all my buildings on this island are under some form of construction. I think it adds a lot more to the trash core element that I'm trying to, uh, uh, like, trying to, to like showcase. Um, and then just to match the other building, I'm also using the yellow retro transportation stop once again. I really love this kind of yellow, this like burnt mustard yellow. I think it looks so good. Um, especially with like all the white and the gray, especially with the snow and everything. Um, it just looks so jarring because it's such a bright color. Um, that and blue, like I said, is the other accent color I'm using. And I just think, I don't know, it just adds a lot. And I really love how it's looking. And then because I wanted to add a little more height to this second cliff, I threw a utility pool down. And this is when I had to call um, rescue services to come and save me because I was stuck. Clearly, like you can't. Unless I put it on the other cliff or like I made cliffs even more complicated like I just I wanted just to place something down and then I got stuck so you know what there's nothing wrong with it it's only a hundred nook miles it's not like I'm really using my nook miles anyway um but yeah I had them drop me off the plaza and then we race back look how much of this island we've already built like I feel like we just started but we've already done so much and yeah that's essentially the fake building I love how it turned out and like I mentioned, all of my fake buildings on this island are on like m like variations of construction. So I do throw a couple of like construction items down, um, like the iron frames. I'll throw a construction sign down later too, um, and a lot of trash bags. And I didn't know that you could actually put something on top of the iron um, frame, so that's good to know. And then because I want to section off my beaches almost completely on this island, I'm throwing down some um, fencing using the um, different fencing. I also use like the regular fences on this island too. My main fencing has been this like iron fencing I've been using. I can't remember the name of it. And then also um, hedges throughout um, a couple of the areas too. Um, I love using the hedges because I love how there's snow on top of the hedges and I just kind of throw them down like in between just to add a little bit of like greenery just because there's not a lot of greenery on this island other than some trees and then I just threw down another trash bag because I think trash bags have become one of my absolute favorite items to decorate with all with like scattered papers they're just it's like it's, um, it's amazing. It looks so good. Amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. So here I am just kind of filling in the spaces by the corners of the street. This is something that's been really interesting to me when it comes to decorating this island, um, is there's really no rule for decorating for trash core, so I'm really just throwing whatever items I find to be messy that kind of go together. Um, I'm also throwing down street lamps because I don't want to forget that. Um, I, don't, I don't want to forget my light fixtures on this island because um, my island dream address is going to be set to like evening slash nighttime. Um, so going back to what I said about decorating the sides of the street, I'm really using a lot of like trash items, using a lot of the cardboard boxes and just trying to make each little section and area that I create unique and a little bit different from each other. I've been meaning to use the, the card tower and I thought it'd be so cute. It's like someone is just sitting 
on the cardboard boxes playing with cards. It's just, it's so silly and dumb, but it works so well with like the theme that I'm building up. And then I threw a tire stack and a trash bag down. Like, do these items go together? Not necessarily, but given the, the like the versatility of this type of, of, um, of theme, it really just allows me to be as like creative as I want with my placements of different items. Um, I also forgot that the garbage pail is an item. I've been using like garbage cans and the other garbage cans that you can use, like the garbage bins, but I forgot that the garbage pail is a item and it's blue. So it matches the color scheme of the island. So of course I'm going to be using that starting like right now. Um, so once again, just using tons of different cardboard items, please ignore Raymond. I'm still trying to decide if I want him to move out or not. Um, he's like a, a solid, like 80% staying on the island, but like I have so many villagers that I kind of want for this island now that I'm not hundred percent sure if I want him to stay. But, um, so here I'm placing the retro transportation stop and using it for its like actual purpose, which is like a bus stop. So um, I'm putting that here and I'm finally using the blue version because like I said I wanted to use the blue version and I placed a couple more items around. I will say that area looks kind of a little too blue to me so I might have to go back and change some of the colors of like maybe the trash bag or something. Um, but that's for a different day. And then right here I'm just extending the um, sidewalk because I wanted to place some fences along the perimeter. Fences are going to be the main way that I block off a lot of my beaches. I've already done that in a couple of videos um, so far when I've decorated along like the corners of my island just because it really adds a lot of that city feel but also because it gives a lot of height to the space and I love that you can customize different posters on the fences as well. I don't include any posters on the corners of these fences just because these fences are sideways so you can't really see them unless you like turn your camera um so I might throw a couple of posters down later but for right now I just I kind of left it as is um so now just to finish off the build the last two things we have to place are cars and a couple of more dropped items for this island as I've been saying I'm only using black gray and white um cars for my island. I just think that it allows the the cars just to blend a little more into the landscape of like the roads and everything and I don't want the, the cars to stand out and be too bright of a color. Um, so I'm just kind of throwing them down randomly and I always make sure that I have enough space to walk in between my cars. That's one thing I'm very mindful when it comes to my builds is to make sure that everything's walkable and I wanted to place a car um, carrying a boat on the street so I had to do that and then I had to adjust everything to make sure that you could walk along the street and it wasn't like you had to like sidestep around any furniture so after I was finished with that the last thing we're gonna do is place a couple of drop items I also have to do the the crosswalk signal as I forgot to place those down earlier on and if you guys saw my last video for this island we went villager hunting and we found Quinn can we talk about how absolutely gorgeous she is I love her and I think she's so perfect for this island like I can't, I forgot about her too. Like when we were villager hunting, I'm like, oh God, who could we take? Like, I don't know who I want for this island. And I want some girl villagers because all the villagers I have in mind are guys and da da da. -da. And she disappeared uh, like, like a goddess and I love her. Um, so the last thing we're throwing down is a couple of more dropped items. I'm using toy cockroaches, a couple of scattered papers 
and really just filling in the space. I thought that this area came together very well and was very cohesive to the other part of the road that I had decorated on this island so far. I think each area and each section looks very unique. Um, even though I've been using the same items over and over again, I feel like it looks like a realistic, very messy city and I'm absolutely loving how it's coming together and I don't know, yeah. So we quickly time travel to later on in the evening. This is the time of day my dream address is gonna be set to. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and without further ado, let's do a final walkthrough and see what it looks like at night. All right, that is everything for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for hanging around with me as we've been working on this island so far. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial style video. If you guys would like to see more videos from me, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye.